the October 24th Committee on Community Resources meeting. Welcome. Um, uh, it is also cross-posted as a Northampton City Council meeting, and I see that Councillor Labarge is here. Um, so, as is Councillor O'Donnell. So, um, just we we have a quorum of the council, but it's also cross-posted as a council meeting. Uh, we're going to do a few quick committee things um, before we start the public forum. I'm going to announce that we're being audio and video recorded, and um, and. I want to see if there's any public comment. Now, this would be public comment for an issue not pertaining to the public forum that we're having very shortly, um, which is on the proposal to request state legislation, a state, legislat state legislative approval um, for a special act increasing the tenant um, membership on the Northampton Housing Authority. So, if you're here to talk to us about something other than that, by all means, please come up for public comment. Otherwise, it doesn't look like it. Okay. Uh, moving on, um, is there a motion on the minutes from September 17th? Move approval. Second. Uh, it's been made and seconded. Is there any discussion on the minutes? No? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. No questions? Okay. Um, so that brings us to our public forum. Um, so we're having a public forum, as I said, on this proposal um, to ask for state legislation to increase the tenant membership on the Northampton Housing Authority. Um, and just to be clear, um, we, the council, can't enact that on our, on our own. This is to ask the mayor to ask for state legislation um, for this order, which I am about to read. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and read it, and then Councillor O'Donnell, who is the sponsor of it, is going to give a little presentation, and then we'll be happy to have a conversation about it. Uh, so this is um, upon the recommendation of Councillor Brian R. O'Donnell, 18.142, in order to strengthen democratic representation in the Northampton Housing Authority, ordered that the mayor is authorized and requested to seek state legislation as follows. An act expanding the membership of the Northampton Housing Authority in the city of Northampton. Be it enacted by the Senate and House of Representatives in the General Court assembled as follows. Section 1. Notwithstanding any other general or special law to the contrary, members of the Housing Authority of Northampton shall include, in addition to the five members provided by Chapter 121B, Section 5, six additional members, each of whom shall be a tenant in a building owned and operated by or on behalf of the Housing Authority. These six members shall be chosen in an election among all tenants of the building owned and operated by or on behalf of the Housing Authority for a term of two years. Such elections shall be held in accordance with regulations promulgated by the Housing Authority and or the Department. In the case of a vacancy, the Mayor shall appoint a tenant member subject to City Council approval to fill the remainder of the unexpired term. Six members shall constitute a quorum. Section 2, this act shall take effect upon its passage. Um, so that is the order that's been put forward by Councilor O'Donnell and um, Councilor, if you wouldn't mind, could you yeah. give a brief overview? Yeah, absolutely. Um, thank you very much. Can everyone hear me when I talk at this point? Probably. Probably. Don't um, forget also move, you want to move the podium so you can face people more. Do you want me to move it over here? Yeah. yeah. Wait, I want you to move this up. That might be a good idea, it would be awkward really? if I couldn't do it. It would be very embarrassing. <laughs> it's, it's light. Alright. Well, um, thank you uh, to the chair and the committee for holding this forum. It's been my hope that this proposal um, be something we uh, work on together as a community with all the different stakeholders at the table to give their input so we arrive at the best possible um, product at the end. Um, let me just give some basic information about uh, the status quo and then what this proposal would do. Uh, the Northampton Housing Authority provides housing in one form or another to approximately 2,253 people. Uh, this includes 849 disabled people, 594 children, and 482 seniors. Um, these figures include rental assistance <coughs> like Section 8 um, in the Massachusetts rental voucher program as well as direct housing in the units that are owned and operated by the Housing Authority. Um, those units are approximately 618 in number. They're spread across the largest um, public housing areas, which are Sabo House, Cahill Apartments, McDonald House, 
Uh, Tobin, Fort Sander, Hampshire Heights, Florence Heights, um, so about seven there. Um, the responsibilities of, of the Housing Authority and the work that it does today are set forth in state law. So as the Chair mentioned, this is not something the city can just unilaterally change by itself. All Housing Authority is set up by state law, Chapter 121B. Um, there are approximately 250 Housing Authorities in Massachusetts, and all of them are governed by the same law. Uh, according to that law, they are, quote, managed, controlled, and governed by a five-person board. The responsibilities of local boards include um, setting and revising policy, establishing operating and capital budgets, ensuring compliance with law and regulation, overseeing the executive director, maintaining good community relations, encouraging tenant participation uh, in the administration of public, of public housing. Um, those are all essential roles for the, board, the Housing Authority Board. And what I think is that all those things would be very much strengthened. Um, and the good work that the Housing Authority Board does would be backed up if we had more tenants participating in that process. Um, I'd like to make it very clear that um, this proposal is about the future. It's not about the executive director as appointed today. It's not about the current members of the Housing Authority Board today. It's about what can we do to ensure we have good oversight and policy making going forward. Um, so as you know, which is for the education of everyone here, um, the state law, here's how the five people come about state law. The governor appoints one of them. And the mayor, in consultation with the city council, appoints the other four. Of the four, one must be a tenant. Um, and there's some other requirements, but basically the others are, are three citizens. Um, the proposal before you adds more, and I think it's relevant to tell you the legislative history in recent years um, about that. The legislature has taken action on this. In 2014, <clears throat> they passed an act relative to housing authorities. This is Chapter 235 of the Acts of 2014. And what it did is set different, uh, change the rules for towns. In towns, of course, the four that are not appointed by the governor uh, um, are not appointed by the mayor because there is no mayor. The town at large elects those four people. And this reform legislation said, of those four, one will become a tenant who is elected by tenants. So that was actually a really good impulse and a really good change. Unfortunately, the regulations that would be required to implement this law were never promulgated by the Department of Housing and Community Development um, as the act required. Um, you have a memo that DHCD um, wrote to me, I think you have in your, your packet. In that memo they explained, quote, housing authority and tenant advocacy groups are now jointly requesting that the state legislature amend this part of the law to require an appointment process for town tenant board members instead of an election. So it's my understanding that there will actually be legislation moving forward in the next, you know, starting in January, which will change that law and will have, like in a city, and all the towns will have one appointed tenant. Um, my proposal, of course, is not to have an appointed tenant member, it's to have elected tenant members. And I think what I, I, this information from the department tells me is that, first of all, they really have no interest in overseeing elections. They don't want to be involved in it, and I can understand. Again, there's 250 housing authorities across the Commonwealth. But I haven't received explicit, um, an explicit statement saying that they are against Northampton trying it. Um, one way that elections could be held would be to look to some place like Boston. Boston has had special legislation mo uh, modifying its housing authority since 1989. Boston Housing Authority was in receivership in the 70s, and the way they got out of receivership is they got special legislation to modify the structure, and they made many changes. One of the things they do today is they have a resident advisory board, um, and those are elected positions. They are tenants, and they are advisory, and they weigh in on the decisions of the Housing Authority. In my opinion, it's a good way to expand participation in the affairs of the Housing Authority among the tenants. The, housing, uh, the resident advisory board sets some bylaws, and conducts elections uh, themselves. They frequently rely on outside groups like 
uh, Greater Boston Legal Services, Mass Senior Action Council, and others. Um, so that's just to the mechanism. Um, briefly, I'd like to address a couple other things. At the last meeting I heard about conflict, concerns about conflict of interest. Is it a problem for tenants to be on a board that takes action on issues that affect them because they reside in the housing authority? Um, it's important to note that the tenants, tenant members of housing authority boards by law are what's called special municipal employees, which means that the state ethics law applies to them, but with a few exceptions. Um, in this case, department regulations, the Housing and Community Development Department regulations are very explicit. Um, they say, quote, a tenant member may participate in a discussion or vote on policy matters if they will apply to all tenants in the same housing program equally such as lease provisions, rules, and procedures. Um, the conflict of interest issue is about when you take action for, on something that just benefits you, or someone related to you, or a smaller number of people in you. But setting policy and conducting oversight is actually something that the law encourages tenants uh, to do. Finally, other jurisdictions, other states have um, larger housing authority boards, and they frequently elect uh, more of their tenants. And you know, I, uh, New York State is one of them. Uh, two tenants are elected by the residents of the housing authority. In Connecticut, uh, boards can range up to seven members total. And similarly, um, according to the bylaws of each housing authority, you can have tenant elections as well. So that's kind of the technical background. What this means is two parts. First, putting more tenants on the board, which I just think is a practical matter, strengthens the work of the housing authority, whose job it is to oversee and set policy. And second is the democratic component. It's doing it by an election rather than an appointment. And to me, the reason behind that is everyone who uh, lives in the city of Northampton, whether or not you live in public housing or not, uh, are equal to, are, are, are entitled to equal representation and to some influence over the policies that affect their lives. So I'd very much like to see the, the method by which we get more tenants on the board to be an election uh, if possible. So that's the motivation and the desired outcome. And again, I look forward to comments tonight and I'm around to answer any questions if they come up from the audience or the committee. Great, thank you. Okay. Um, I'm sure we all have questions for you, but if this is the public forum, we want to hear from you. So um, I'm just, it occurred to me that we've moved the podium, so I'm gonna check the camera. And as I'm doing that, is there, Someone, would, if anyone has questions for Councilor O'Donnell or uh, thing, comments you want to make, if you just want to come to the podium. Thank you. First of all, I'd like to thank you all this evening, and particularly you, Councilor O'Donnell. I'd like to thank you for making time for us. I'm somewhat disappointed. Can, can I just interrupt you super quick? Could you please state your name sure. and your address? Sure. Thank My you. name is Ella Smolinski. I live at 41 Alamo Court, Florence. My son is actually tenant, and he lives at the McDonald House. I think it's vital that the tenants have a voice. I am not discrediting the work of the board. I understand budgets. I understand figures and facts and paperwork. I understand regulation and how they need to be followed. But what I do feel is missing is a voice, a much stronger voice from the tenants. I understand from Mr. Butker's point of view, we had a brief discussion on how that may be difficult to select those tenants. I think it's imperative that they're elected. These are the people that know them, that know them well. You might remember the air conditioner incident down at the housing authority when the air conditioners were removed. And the tenants, these brave people, came forward the public spoke out. It was a public outcry. So it affected the health of the tenants down there. I must be open and honest with you. I'm not going to share any names. But I'm going to tell you, there are some people who are afraid to speak up. They're afraid to have a voice. There are studies been done that have been done. People who are living with mental health conditions are often reluctant to speak up. You know why? They're afraid. They're afraid. They don't want to be disliked. They're afraid that they'll be evicted. And that does happen in many cases. Well, I understand that this might be very difficult. And it may be complicated. I also have observed that many people who work at the Public Housing Authority have many of course in mental health first aid. Not just there, but in all, all over the entire community. So that they can better understand and work with people with mental health conditions. So in closing, I'd like to say, threatening and harassing people isn't a good method. 
And I really think on a whole, that you'll reach out to the people in the housing authority, that you'll go there to their locations and have public forums, like at the McDonald House and at the Selva House and at other housing areas, and hear from the tenants and hear what they have to say. This is not to discredit the director. This is not to discredit the staff. All I'm asking for you to understand is that the people that live there and reside there know what their needs and wants are. And why they may not get everything they want and why everything may not go their way, that's true. But they need a voice. And I hope tonight, and I'm sorry and disappointed tonight there are more people here, but I see Ms. Avedos is here. And I, want, I think that we're going to have a strong voice representing our area. I see Councilor Barge is here. And I thank all of you tonight for your time. Thank you. Thank you so much. Um, and I just want to say, you know, we, um, we're having this here at JFK. We did try and have these two forums at locations that were near different properties. Um, we had a hard time finding locations. So we hope that this was a fairly centralized place. And then our, our next one, it will be downtown, so near those um, those. <coughs> so um, anything you can do to help us get the word out from the next forum, I would really appreciate it. But we're, we would love to have more tenants come and, and, uh, and voice their opinions. Um, anyone else want to speak? Good evening. My name is Jerry Blinker. I live at 127 Bridge Street, and I am a member of the Board of Commissioners of the Northampton Housing Authority. I'm here to speak only for myself and wanted to add that I appreciate your offering us this opportunity to address the proposal to increase the membership of the board. This legislation seems deceptively simple, so I want to point out some issues that I believe need to be more deeply fleshed out in the proposed legislation. At our last Housing Authority board meeting, a woman who has a Section 8 housing voucher asked if the folks holding Section 8s that run through the Northampton Housing Authority would be considered tenants and thus allowed to vote for representation on the board. The legislation seems to be ambiguous on this point, but it needs to be clear if these folks will be considered tenants for voting purposes or not. There are over 800 Section 8 vouchers being administered by our agency, but many of these folks no longer live in Northampton because the voucher follows them should they move. It's important to note that should these folks be allowed to vote, they could conceivably give all six seats on the board to people who don't live in Northampton or in buildings owned and operated by the Northampton Housing Authority. They outnumber the approximately 600 tenants who live in our buildings. If the legislation is limited just to tenants who live in the buildings we own, how will the voting for tenant representatives be done? Will there be one ballot with everyone interested in serving and each tenant then vote for six? If you do it this way, Please remember that Salvo has 190 apartments, much more than any other of our properties. And if the Salvo tenants decide to vote as a block, they could conceivably take all six seats. I don't think that would be optimal in terms of getting diversity and diverse opinions on the board. So it becomes necessary to determine how tenant commissioners will be elected. If you don't want one electoral district selecting all six, will there be two districts selecting three or three districts selecting two? Who's going to decide that? And which of our properties will go into each district? And who's going to run the elections and under what rules? I am truly fearful this legislation will end up causing a lot of division, strife, and upset among our tenants, rather than focusing on making certain our tenants' needs are properly addressed. I also think it's important to note that we are wrestling with the issue of conflict of interest when it comes to voting on capital and program projects we sponsor. <coughs> we now have two members, two tenants on our five member board. And the question has been raised if these current tenant members can vote on any item proposed for their own buildings. Our attorney is currently researching the issue and there's a possibility that tenants may not be able to vote for projects for their own buildings if they're standalones or they may have to recuse themselves for voting, for voting on things that impact the program in their buildings. I think, I believe there are alternatives that will better serve our tenants and give them better access, not just to the administration of the agency, but to the board. I really like the idea of a resident advisory board. It's my personal opinion that the board, excuse me, Kara, is not given enough information from the administration about the types of issues 
that tenants are bringing them to deal with each month. In fact, on the air conditioner issue, which resulted in the awful anger and upset that provoked this legislation, everyone should know that the executive director sent out the letter banning air conditioners without notifying the board in advance that this was being done. We were taken as much by surprise as were our tenants. And I didn't know about it until I started getting the angry emails and calls. And I want, just want to state, if that letter had come to us as a board, I certainly would have voted against sending it out because I don't think it was well strategized, well thought out. It wasn't, it wasn't well done. We are now in the process of revising our agency bylaws. And I think a lot of the issues like this one that need attention will be addressed by the draft revision that Commissioner Marilyn Richards and I are developing as the bylaws revision committee. We can all do a better job listening to tenants and getting direct input from them so we know what issues are presenting themselves. Tenants can now address the board at each of our meetings and the speak outs are one of the best and most useful part of our meetings. As one example, a tenant from Hampshire Heights came to a recent board meeting and spoke about water in the base basement of some buildings there. Now that the commissioners know about it, we asked the executive director to look at the issue and possible ways of resolving it. We will be doing testing to determine where the water is coming from and what needs to be done to rectify the situation. Other tenants spoke at our open comment period to inform us about problems with mold in some of our buildings. The board then asked the executive director to research and do testing if necessary and come back with a plan to remediate, which she has done. It turns out the vents in some buildings had not had much preventive maintenance in quite a while, and it seems that was the source of much of the problem. We have hired a firm to do vent cleaning, and we all hope such work will take care of those. Enhancing the open lines of communication between tenants and the board is, in my opinion, um, a much useful, a much more useful way to proceed. I will be very supportive of any efforts to reactivate and rejuvenate tenant organizations in all of our buildings as a way to funnel tenant concerns to the board. Perhaps we can have representatives of tenants meet directly with the board on a regular basis to bring us up to date on issues of concern that need attention and the kinds of additional services that the people they represent would like us to offer. As a commissioner, I have told a number of tenant organizations that I would be glad to attend their dinners and functions, and I have been to several at Salvo and Tobin. It's a good way to build positive relationships with tenants and get to hear from them firsthand about their issues and concerns. I also believe we need to provide more services for our tenants. Springfield Housing Authority has a robust schedule of programs that assist tenants with managing and improving their lives that includes efforts to assist residents with creating and enhancing self-sufficiency. Some services, according to their website, are aimed at helping parents and children from infancy to adulthood with a special focus on enhancing educational opportunities. After school and summer programming is also provided for youth in, in, in some develop, adult of assuming in some developments. And for adults, they have programs focusing on education and job training, such as GED and English as a Second Language program, and workshops on health with financial and computer literacy, career planning and placement, nutrition training, and more. Outside agencies are off, often asked to visit to help residents maintain their living situations, and speakers provide information to residents on issues like health care, fostering community, and more. We need to do much, much more in these areas and I will be asking for more of this in future board meetings. I'm also pleased to let you know that we are in the final stages of developing a website that will finally allow tenants in the community to access information about the Northampton Housing Authority and report maintenance and other issues that need attention. The board has taken leadership in pressing for this website and we're hopeful it will end up running by, we hope it will end up running by year's end to add another way for tenants to communicate with the administration and board when I was asked by the mayor if I'd be willing to serve on the Housing Authority Board, I said I would, but I wanted him to know that I would consider myself as a very friendly, as a very tenant-friendly commissioner. He told me that was exactly what he was looking for in a new board member. I've been to Salvo many, many times over the years and know many of the tenants from those visits. I truly believe those of us serving on the board are there to serve our tenants and work hard to provide all with safe, secure, and healthful housing. Despite the fact we've been confronted with some tough issues recently, I remain committed to doing my best for those who depend on us for one of life's true necessities. Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Mr. Becker. 
evening. My name is Karen Clifford. I'm the Executive Director of the Northampton Housing Authority. Um, and I spoke to DHCD this afternoon. I've been asked to read the um, letter that they sent to Councilor O'Donnell on um, October 10th um, because they are not in support of this. Um, <coughs> comments on proposed Northampton City Council legislation. After reviewing the proposed language being considered by the City Council, DHCD offers the following. The two-year term is very short, and this would be counterproductive to the board if it had to accommodate such a rotating group. Other board members are appointed for a five-year term, and the expiration years are staggered so that the board has somewhat consistent membership. Also, it takes a while to learn the duties of being a board member. Because boards have a rather technical set of duties, DHCD has mandated online trainings for all board members. There is also a voluntary DHCD funded <coughs> one day in-person session offered for tenant board members at MassNARO and MassNARO offers board member trainings as well. Tenant elections can be time consuming, costly, and are difficult and are difficult to administer or monitor for fairness. For these reasons, the housing authority and tenant advocacy groups are now jointly requesting that the state legislature amend, and amend Section 5A of MGL 121B to require an appointment process for town tenant board members instead of an election. Legislative, legislative amendment may be forthcoming in the next six months. State election laws are protective of people's rights, so working outside of state election laws or infrastructure could leave the process open to risk of disenfranchisement, accusations of fraud, etc. Please consider who or what agency would have dispute resolution powers over if this moves forward. The cost to administer elections <laughs> is not trivial. DHCD, which is our funding agency, <clears throat> would not provide any additional funding to the Housing Authority to conduct such elections. I'm not sure if HUD would. If HUD would. One reason, uh, one reason mail seems to be a better election system in that some residents have difficulty getting into an in-person election, dealing with transportation, translation, babysitting, etc. However, the Boston Housing Authority seems to have found a way to successfully administer in-person citywide elections for the resident advisory board. Taking to them, talking to them would be a good idea if this moves forward. Assuming that Section 5A of MGL 121B is amended in the coming months, DHCD will not be promulgating regulations on the administration of tenant elections. Housing authorities also do not have the legal authority to promulgate their own regulations, so I would consider saying these elections shall be in accordance with the authority policies, not regulations. That said, um, I think that in the past, um, tenant associations had not been prevalent in the housing authority. The resident advisory boards, which should be in place and we're working on putting, getting them together, along with the tenant associations, should be the voice of the tenants. Um, and working with the housing authority to best come up with the, the solutions that are necessary to operate the housing authority. <laughs> so in, in speaking to DHCD, and HUD this afternoon, um, they are recommending that we move more towards having tenant advisory board and tenant associations and much more participation. Currently, we have a hard time uh, keeping them manned. We just have one tenant association dissolve. Um, we're trying to get them and help them to get back on, on track, but it's very difficult even to keep the tenant associations manned, much less having the board have residents. Thank you. Thank you. And just so you know, Mr. O'Donnell provided this memo to us and it was part of our public um, packet. Package. So. Okay. She just asked me to read it. So. Absolutely. I just wanted you to know we'd, we've, all, we've seen it. All right. Thank you. Anybody else? Margot, would you like to? Mm -hmm. Get the feeling you would. Come on up. Hello. My name is Edgardo Cancel. Um, a uh, resident of Hampshire Heights, um, president of the tenant association there. Um, and uh, I would like to start by saying that I am in full support um, uh, of this uh, order and I'm really appreciative that uh, we are taking this time to um, allow uh, members of the uh, community to come and talk about this. Um, I would also like to say that um, and a lot of these issues that we've been having lately with the housing, 
some of the things have um, have sort of been overlooked and and for me uh, uh, being one of the residents uh, of if if not the resident who complains the most and brings up the most concerns um, these things are important that I'm about to mention one is that there has been considerable change uh, since the new director uh, came on board. And I don't think I've taken enough time um, to credit her for everything that she has done right. Um, a lot of times um, when we're frustrated about things that aren't going right and that could be done better, we also lose sight of the things that are happening right and that are, that are, that are um, creating positive change. Um, and having been uh, uh, a kid that grew up here in Northampton uh, and lived in Florence Heights um, since the mid 80s, I have seen the changes over the years. Um, and some of the changes that I've seen have not been good. Uh, for instance, um, when I was a kid uh, in my community in Florence Heights, um, it was a uh, very tight uh, community and we always had the director stop by um, and say hello to residents. Um, I often talk about how we almost had these little friendly wars about whose who's home the director is going to come to have coffee in um, and that kind of stuff. And the director at the time was very motivated um, and very involved in the community and creating positive change, uh, talking with um, tenant associations, collaborating. Mm -hmm. Um, and doing great things for the community. I was able, um, as a kid, to enjoy many programs that were brought into my community at Florence Heights. Arts programs, um, uh, teen center bands coming in to pick us up, uh, uh, the YMCA, um, UMass uh, uh, students would come and, and, um, and volunteer time uh, on after school programs. We had a whole variety of resources at our disposal right there in Florence Heights in our community center uh, that no longer exist today. Um, over the years, a lot of these, um, whether because of funding or whatever reasons they were, a lot of these resources dis disappeared. Um, and our director at the time didn't seem as motivated, was not doing as much as we were hoping to as a community. So when the new director came, um, a lot of those things started changing. Uh, for instance, if you go by Hampshire Heights nowadays, you'll notice a big difference in how that property is being maintained, particularly on the outside. Um, and so I appreciate that. Um, the new director has um, uh, made it her um, effort to uh, bring in better equipment, more equipment, so um, we're not only uh, 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 looking better, but also, also feeling better about a lot of things. Um, and um, there have been many, many other uh, changes uh, since she came on board um, that have been very positive. Uh, and I think it's important to mention those things. I think it's also important to mention that um, the board um, uh, of the Housing Authority um, has also been changing lately. And some of the members um, that are coming on board now are really interested in supporting uh, not, not just the management, but also looking for ways to support um, the community and residents. Um, and Mr. Bucker, you forgot to mention that you have also assisted to our Florence Heights uh, event there, and I appreciate you for that. Um, and, he, and he has always uh, said, invite me. If there's stuff happening in the community, invite me. When he comes, I think he's a perfect example of the good people we have on the board at, at, at the Housing Authority. Uh, having said all that, um, it has been extremely difficult, though, um, uh, to operate as a tenant association in collaboration with the Housing Authority. Um, and that's my biggest reason for being in favor of this order and this legislation. And it's because I believe over the years, uh, those relationships have um, uh, have not been as strong as in the past. Um, and I do agree that um, if we, we had more tenant association and more collaboration between the housing authority um, and those tenant associations, 
we would see, I think residents would see the types of changes uh, that, that, that we are looking for, but that hasn't been existing. It's been very, uh, we've experienced a lot of resistance uh, from the housing authority in working with us. Um, and um, and it's, been, it's been really frustrating. It's been really frustrating bringing stuff up and having to uh, wait or, uh, to their board meetings every month to be able to bring uh, concerns and, be, and actually be heard. Um, because throughout, uh, in between meetings, uh, we send emails, uh, we go to the office, uh, we talk to folks at the housing authority and nothing happens. A lot of times we, we're just completely ignored. Um, and that's not good. That's not good uh, for any relationship when people, when folks are getting, being ignored, uh, when folks aren't taken seriously. And that's, uh, as a resident and as a leader in my community, that's how we feel. Um, and I appreciate the comment that someone made earlier about um, uh, folks um, uh, uh, just not being heard and, and not having a voice. Um, because that's um, exactly what my experience has been, is um, a lot of residents are afraid to stand up and speak up, uh, either because of fear of retaliation or fear of um, being ridiculed or feeling, uh, or, or, or just being shut down, like I have many times when I assist, when I go to the uh, board meetings in Northampton. It's been many times where I stand up and where, where I feel um, uh, attacked uh, I feel shut down, um, and, and, and I've um, been told uh, uh, in, in, in some ways, in other ways, you know, really just finish and sit down. Um, and, uh, and, and that type, those types of experiences is what I feel, why I feel that um, we need more representation at the Housing Authority. Uh, we need a, a more of a voice, and we need a, more of a willingness uh, from the housing authority to work with the residents, to listen to what their residents have to say, um, and to take us seriously. Um, and um, I think that that's really what I want to share today. Thank you so much. <coughs> Anybody else? My name's Pete Cushing. I'm from Four Sander Apartments in Florence. I'm the president of the Tenants Association. I've been there for about 19 years now. And about 11 of those years, I've been their tenant president. This opportunity to expand the board with members from our communities will only help. This director is a new director. She has a thousand different directions to go in with very little money to put out. We need the people on the board to stand, let the director know what the priorities are that we need so we can put them in order so everybody gets a fair share of the pie. And to expand this board, to put knowledge in her position will make it easier on her, easier on the members of her office. And the Tenants Association will get more knowledge out of this and help that we do need. There's got to be a fair distribution of everything, and the way the board sits right now, it's not. I live in a 50-year-old community, and we have old, old things to take care of. And we need this voice on the board to help us. We have our Tenants Association, it's small, but our neighbors voice their opinions to me and I do bring them to the board meetings. I know it's a battle, but we have to do it. And I would appreciate everything you could do for us to expand the board, to help everybody completely, not just one community, but the whole community. That's it. Thank you. Anybody else speak? Um, I don't know if there have any questions for Councilor O'Donnell. Otherwise, I would imagine the committee probably has some, some questions or comments. 
Um, and also just feel free, raise your hand. You know, if, if something occurs to you or we say something that you want to respond to, please just let me let me know. Um, Councilor O'Donnell, just, you're raising your hand. Yeah, if I may, just to correct the record, uh, to my knowledge, the, it was stated the Department of Housing and Community Development opposes uh, my proposal. Um, that has not been communicated to me. It certainly is not, could not be surmised in the memo that they sent me and I shared with the uh, committee. The memo is a list of helpful suggestions for improvements, but to my knowledge, they do not oppose this legislation. Additionally, uh, to those potentially helpful comments, the city solicitor um, gave us a, um, a memo for discussion and had also some comments. I don't, I don't know if you want to, or any of those that you want to talk about in particular? Um, I mean, I'm, I'm happy. Are there any that you would like to talk about? I mean, let's see. What, do we have a memo maybe? If I don't have the memo in front of me. The one that um, I was sort of most interested in is he said that generally these sorts of petitions, they need they should be drafted in a way that allows the legislature to have some flexibility uh -huh. and that helps the legislature uh, be able to um, to vote for them. But if they're too rigid and, and we don't allow them to make some amendments, mm -hmm. it has less of a chance. No, that's right. I think the way the default position for a home rule petition, and again, go through the process, the legislature is empowered to pass whatever it wants, for two or more towns. When it comes to something that just affects one community, um, I mean, they could do it with a supermajority vote, but as a practical matter, they defer to that community. Um, and this was worked out when they amended the Constitution to add home rule provisions. So what we're doing is saying, yes, we would like this to occur um, for Northampton. And both the city council and mayor have to agree, and then we've, we've assented to it and suggested it. The default position for a home rule petition is going to be that the legislature can make modifications, not just correcting typos and moving words around, but um, to make things more clear. But they can uh, change it in a way that uh, is aligned with the stated public, public um, purpose of the legislation. So if you don't want that, for example, I would, I'm sure you know, it could be a town that puts in a request for more liquor licenses. And they say, we want three liquor licenses. They may preface that by saying, we request this legislation, and we also ask the legislature not modify it substantively. And so my opinion is, if you, if you do what this order does and just puts out legislation, I imagine it could be changed substantively as long as it basically accomplishes the same thing. That's my understanding. Um, that kind of segues into something that we heard um, either at our last meeting or it might have been in legislative matters when we talked about this. Um, there was something that we heard from a community member about a desire to do this regionally and wanting to know if we had done the outreach to any other communities to see if there was interest so that it would come to the legislature with a little bit more um, Oomph, you know, with a broader base of um, interest and support. It's an interesting concept to discuss, um, Councilor. Like I mentioned, and as others have mentioned too, um, the 2014 legislation that would change the rules for towns is probably going to be repealed and replaced with an appointment. So there is going to be discussion in here. I don't sense a lot of appetite to do this, you know, writ large. I'd probably prefer it. You know, a statewide bill would be great. Um, but I think, so I guess the short answer is I haven't reached out to other communities. I just saw an issue in Northampton and sought to address it um, for our community. Whether that turns into something ultimately is a, is a possibility, I suppose. Yeah. I guess the other, oh, please. Um, I, I'm sort of intrigued by this reference in the <clears throat> in the memo from Amy Stikely, is that how she pronounced the name of yes. um, That uh, other housing authorities and tenant advocacy groups are uh, apparently beginning to think about uh, proposing some amendments to the to, to, to chapter 121. 
And I'm wondering if there is a little bit of gathering momentum to open up the statute and make some changes to it, why we wouldn't want to consider being part of that effort. And, and indeed, um, I've, I've heard a number of proposals for, for cities where five is now the, the number of board members to expand it to seven, expand it to nine, expand it to a larger number of folks to gather to, to get more areas of expertise built into the, to the board. Uh, to increase tenant representation uh, through that through that mechanism, but but to do it in such a way that you've got housing authorities around the state and tenant groups around the state pushing for it, uh, and it, and it becomes um, uh, statewide, which I, I would like to think uh, would draw in some of our some of our regional cities that would also be interested in it too. So I just I just wonder if you'd be receptive to joining in the momentum that appears to be building for some larger amendments to the enabling legislation. Well, I mean to be clear, the what's contemplated is undoing the provision for elections in towns. So it's actually going. I mean, it's appointing town, appointing one tenant member for every town, just like we do in a city. Right. So in that way. I would say it's a positive change. I guess I'm disappointed that um, the law that was passed in 2014 uh, was not able to succeed with the support of the department. Um, so is there momentum? I don't know. There's certainly a need to correct the law because it has not been implemented and it's been on the books for four years. Um, that said, I do take your point that in principle there is an opportunity to piggyback on something. Um, I just can't answer the question, um, what would be more politically effective, a home rule petition for Northampton or a statewide effort? I'm not sure they're mutually exclusive, in fact. And certainly we can only control one of them, and that's what we ask for. Um, I mean, if there's a home rule petition from Northampton, which is what I would like to see, because I think in the past Northampton has shown leadership on new ways of doing things, it could be a model, in fact, to do in other communities, so or perhaps a statewide law. But if that goes forward and then there is an effort among whoever to push for similar changes within the statewide context, then a home rule petition from Northampton would only be uh, supportive of that and helpful of it. So I would hope we would consider both because I don't know which would be more likely to succeed. Um, quick follow-up, um, my understanding, and it's rudimentary uh, uh, as to how this might work through the legislative process, is that a matter like this, DHCD's opinion would certainly be sought by, by whatever committee in the legislature would, would, would take this up. And though they didn't outright say we object, they raised a lot of serious, specific objections and, 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 and suggestions for change. And it just, it just seems to me that might make more sense to join with other other housing authorities, other tenant advocacy groups, and work in work with DHCD as opposed to be proposing something oppositionally to what DHCD is is, is saying they would they would be supported by. So, as to the political viability of going one way or the other, it, it just seems to me that uh, it would make sense to proceed in a in a way that might have DHCD support because they are going to play a role in the legislative process. Um, there's no oppositional framework whatsoever because it was I who reached out to DHCD and started the conversation with um, Ms. Stipe who then provided um, some, some of these helpful recommendations which I could think, I, w I could imagine being adopted through the amendment process as we go and have these public forums and discuss it as a council. Um, I just don't know if it is true that what I want to accomplish, which is greater tenant representation for cities, certainly Northampton, and do it by an election process, which I think is, is critical because it provides agency to people who feel, frankly, um, not as powerful as the rest of their community. Um, I'm not sure there is a moment. If there is, that would be great. And in, in, on paper, we take these principles and codify them for the entirety of the Commonwealth. That would be great. I'm not aware that 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 there's an actual movement to do that. To be frank. Call from eight zero two. 
Um, so you'll remember at our last meeting, I had suggested that, so the number that you had chosen was six, and it makes sense in terms of having uh, for voting, but um, I noted that I believe there are seven properties that are um, owned and operated by the 13. Okay. Um, well then, okay. Let me think about that for a minute. But I mean, I still, my larger point is still that, um, and actually this goes to something that Mr. Budger said, you know, there are some buildings that are significantly larger than others. And um, I would like to see it so that each, and each property has its own needs, interests. Um, and my concern would be that if you have somewhere like Salvo House that has many, many tenants, you might have um, significantly more representation from them uh, by election than some of the smaller properties, yet they should also have a voice. Um, so I don't know if you've given any thought to how we might amend it to accomplish that goal. I think that, um, I think it's a good question, Councillor. I think you're looking at layers of participation. And certainly there's a very clear responsibility of the housing authority to create as much tenant participation as they can in the decision. Um, in the decision they make. In fact, as I mentioned last time, um, the federal agency overseeing and providing funding to housing authorities, HUD, um, states very clearly in its regulations, quote, HUD promotes resident participation and the active involvement of all of residents in all aspects of the housing authorities' overall mission and operation. So the way you do it, I think, is you look at different levels. This is not, this would not replace or be to the exclusion of tenant, uh, tenant associations, um, which are, are geographically based. And I agree with others who have, who have highlighted the importance of uh, reactivating uh, those in, in all of the, the major uh, housing areas, um, also exploring a resident advisory board. These are all good levels. What I'm talking about is just the, the one level at the top, I guess. And so with regards to how you do it, I actually appreciated some of the comments that I've heard um, asking these questions. Do you have districts? You know. Um, you know, one thing that's not in there, for example, is I, I would suggest that the terms be staggered, you know, so you don't elect them all at once. And, you know, I think some of that can be put into the legislation. Others, uh, uh, other things, as I pointed out, a good, guide, a good um, yardstick is um, the Boston Resident Advisory uh, Board, the Boston Housing Authority, which, as I mentioned, did have special legislation um, given to it since 1989. The Boston Housing Authority just has bylaws, and so they set the rules for how elections would be administered. What I take from the DHCD memo is they don't want to be in the business of promulgating regulations about, about that. But it seems like the organization itself, in this case Northampton Housing Authority Board, could debate and answer some of these questions, um, which are very interesting questions. How do we want to um, organize the elections? What outside groups could be helpful? Would community action be helpful, for example? Um, you know, when I was in the Ward 3 Neighborhood Association, that, that association helped conduct the tenant elections for Walter, Walter Savile House. So that's not out of the realm of possibility. And I guess um, I just want to make sure that we're not uh, making the perfect the enemy of the good throughout this process. Um, because the status quo is there are no elections. And so, and no election system is perfect, that's the other thing. And um, that's why, it, the way I would want to write this is to leave the decision making and the flexibility to the local agency to, to figure it out over time in terms of the best interests of the tenants. I have some questions um, for uh, Ms. Clifford and uh, Mr. Butker. So, um, so a resident advisory board, uh, the, so right now the, the bylaws are being explored. Can that be added on now or? So the, the current, um, the way that the law reads now and the regulations are that there should be a resident advisory board, which um, in addition to tenant associations, since my, um, start here at the Housing Authority, I don't think that any of the tenant associations or the resident advisory board have been operating as they should. And that's allowing the residents 
to have more of a voice and to be more involved in budget preparation, um, mod rehabs, which is the capitalization programs. Um, I really believe that if those are done properly, it would accomplish what everybody here is trying to accomplish. Um, but the residents need direction on that, um, which is something that I've been putting together. But to clarify, when I spoke to Amy Stightly today, it was, it was more instead of doing this, to work on getting things where they're supposed to be with the Resident Advisory Board and the Tenant Associations, um, which I think is through <coughs> education and support. Um, there's been a lot of, uh, a lot of things like that that I've encountered over there. And so we're just trying to get them together. Um, Hampshire Heights just got a tenant association. Um, however, McDonald just dissolved theirs. Tobin dissolved theirs. And so I currently have the <coughs> resident services coordinator trying to assist those people in getting those back up and going because that is the voice. Did I answer that all right? I, 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 I think so. so Basically, so what I'm trying to get at is this is something that we could do right now without going to the state legislature. These are things that we could start on. We could wake up tomorrow and start working on these things, as well as um, uh, working on uh, for, uh, getting our the tenants associations back up and going. Um, you know, so so thank you. That was yes. So that yes, your yes to your answer your question. And in addition to that, I've already been working on getting that going. Um, the Resident Advisory Board um, wasn't even properly set up uh, when I started there. And so I, I'm in the process of getting those regulations to make sure that we're in compliance with them so that I can assist the residents in the, actually having a Resident Advisory Board that has a larger voice with the Board of Commissioners. Thank you. Yeah, so, you know, I, my thoughts on things is, are that um, you know that, that there's work we can be doing right now around addressing uh, the tenants having a voice. We we have systems that we've neglected, and we need to tend to those. And that um, and I think we can start working on those things right away. And I just want to put that out there in terms of while we're weighing this piece of legislation right here, that there are things we can get to right away. And that I also think that the way we go about doing those things will inform us how to best do this. Because, um, because it, how do, you know, a resident advisory board and ten tenants associations, there, there needs to be structures in place for all of these things to equitably actually happen, and that, um, and they need support. They, uh, you mentioned the Ward Three Neighborhood Association helping out with some of the elections, Councilor O'Donnell, and um, that um, that you know having you know neighbors from the community to come in and trusted neighbors. That was the that was the big issue at the time is that the tenants at Salvo House didn't trust uh, the housing authority. To have a fair election, and that, um, and it was actually uh, Mr. Butger's leadership around that that made that happen. Um, but you know that that trust also has led, the, you know, distrust keeps coming in, and um, and it and it and the in the case of the Salvo Tennis Association, it dissolved because of the distrust, um, and so I, I think that's. That's a really big thing that we need to look at here. Whether we're doing it this way through the state legislation or through these these uh, means at our disposal right now is how we can rekindle that trust and that faith. And that um, so that's that's where I'm landing right now. And I, I also appreciate everything that everybody's sharing. Um, that um, that it's 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 a difficult discussion, but it's a really great discussion that we're having. And so I want to thank everybody. And you know, Councillor O'Donnell, I want to thank you for bringing this forward. I you know I don't know where we're going to land with this, but this this is a really good discussion that we're having. So thank you. Anybody else? Anyone want to add anything? Yeah, I then. Um, so, I have a question about the Resident Advisory Board because I brought this up to um, 
the senior public manager at the Housing Authority yesterday um, um, because I did not know about the Resident Advisory Board um, at the Housing Authority. Um, and of course, residents want to be part of that. Um, but the response was that Resident Advisory Board are only designated for um, properties, residents in properties that are federally uh, funded. So right there I see a disconnect and I'm wondering why that would be like that and why the state funded properties such as mine or where I live in Hampshire would be excluded from that. Because I believe a resident advisory board with um, solid working tenant associations can really go a long way while we wait to hear about this uh, great proposal. So I'm 100% um, in agreement uh, with Councilor Nash. Um, that, that is something that we can start working right away. And if we can have some clarity around that, um, at the very least, we can start having more resident voice and more resident participation as we await and we give other um, people in the community a chance to participate in, in this discussion, which I also agree that it's a great discussion. I appreciate everybody that's involved here in this discussion. Ms. Clifford, do you have any information or um, could you answer that question for? So although um, certain regula regulatory agencies require certain things, a resident advisory board could be done for the whole housing authority, um, for all the properties. Uh, that was, that was, that's been my research that I've been working on uh, because even <clears throat> with the res resident advisory board, um, they essentially would meet with the residents of their communities, of specific communities, get input, and then come to us and we, we have meetings. And there's specific guidelines about that that have just never been followed or even implemented at the Housing Authority. Same thing with the tenant associations. There's just so much more that could be happening through that, um, through that venue and, and then them participating with the Resident Advisory Board. So my recommendation, um, as soon as I can get to that point, is um, to recommend the board have one for the whole entire Housing Authority, not just the ones based on the federal reg regulations. Great, and so would you be able to work with Edgardo on that and, and answer any other questions that he has? I, I absolutely can. Um, at Edgar, we have several um, federal and state audits and inspections happening right now, so I know you know that that's an ongoing process, but like I said before, make an appointment and we can talk about it. Thank you, yes, please. Um, yes, I'd like to just say that when people stop talking associations dissolve. When people think they're not heard and they're not listened to, people don't bother talking. To, to, to be honest, completely honest with you, I had a hard time coming tonight. I wanted to say, you know what, I want to stay home and just chill. Because people, when they, people think they're not listened to, that's what happened. Just that I learned something new tonight. I learned there was a social worker down at the housing authority, which I, my, I never knew existed, and many people don't. That's a critical role. Why isn't that number posted down at the various housing and tenants aren't aware of it? That person plays a vital role and maybe able to help tenants with many issues. In addition, the state number, I know you, you use this acronym for a state level, the state oversight number for the housing authority should also be publicly displayed in all of these buildings and all tenants should know. And I'd like to just add that I made a call there. No one even returned my call. So while it's important for all this oversight and overhead, and I don't mean to be rude or disrespectful, these are things where tenants feel disenfranchised. When no one listens, when no one returns calls, when someone says make an appointment and they don't make the appointment, this disenfranchises people. And people like me, you know what they'd rather do? Stay home and watch Law and Order. And you know, I thank you very much for your time, and I wanna tell you how grateful I am to housing that my son waited years for his housing. And I'm gonna tell you something right now. It's the most important thing in his life. And our, we as families, we really do our best. And I wanna thank all of you for what you do and for listening to us tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you for not watching Law and Order. <laughs> and talking with us. Yes, Ms. And then So if I, oh, you first. Uh, I just wanna say that um, I, uh, as a member of the board, uh, just to show good faith, 
uh, I would like to ask our executive director to put the issue of a resident advisory council on the next board meeting so we can initiate the discussion. So we're not going to let this go. I think this is an important discussion that we need to have and for all the reasons we've heard tonight and I'm looking forward to that discussion. Thank you, Mr. So um, the, I just want to uh, give information here. Uh, currently, the state properties have what's called a resident services coordinator, which uh, could be looked at as social social worker, not a social worker, but does the same kind of things. Um, the federal properties do not have one. Um, I had presented to the board for us to fund that position. And so the person that works on the state properties um, still volunteers her time, not when, you know, during off hours to help the federal properties. So we are in process of uh, trying to fill the position for the federal properties, which would be Florence Heights and uh, McDonald House. <clears throat> and um, I believe the young lady said that her son lived at McDonald House. So <clears throat> those things are done upon move-in. Um, numbers are given, packets are given um, with that information. And all of the DHCD uh, state and federal uh, information and numbers are listed in the paperwork that they sign the lease, the house rules, all of those things. Um, however, <clears throat> those things will also be posted on our website as soon as it's fully up and operational. And a link to, for them to be able to contact them if they need to. I mean, I know that I've misplaced paperwork that I've had yeah. from you yeah. know, when I first moved to my house. Yes, so yes. maybe it would be possible to you know, send out updated copies to the residents or just make sure that they have that information. Yeah, it's posted to, um, we have, Glass boards at the properties as person <laughs> in those areas as well. Great. Um, can you hold on one sec? I know Councilor Klein wanted to say um, First of all, I want to say thank you to everyone who has spoken, everyone who's here who's not necessarily speaking to. Your presence is really appreciated. Um, I. This is a, a public forum, and we're really here to listen to you. But one of the things that I kind of want to reflect back is that. Um, you know, there's this saying, I think it actually comes from unions, nothing about us without us. And um, it's, you know, I hear all of this talk about tenants associations and resident advisory boards. Those are very important mechanisms, absolutely, and I think that those need to be in place. Mm -hmm. But, you know, as somebody who comes from a grassroots activist background, I really appreciate what those kinds of groups can do to influence policy, influence the direction of administrations, of structures. So I really do value those kinds of input, like um, tenant associations and resident advisory boards. However, when policy needs to get made. It's the voting members of the, the housing authority, the commission, that have the final say. And yes, you know, we want to believe that they will take in the input from the tenant associations and the resident advisory boards, but if we don't have tenants on the, on the actual voting body that sets the policy, those voices can get lost. Those um, <coughs> grassroots activist boards voices can get lost. So I just kind of want to reflect that back because I, I heard from the few people that spoke who are tenants that it is really important to them to see a proposal like this move forward because they want that, that voice, that kind of voice in policy making. So I just want you to be assured that I've heard that, I think the whole committee here has heard that, and um, we are taking that under advisement. Hey, Director, did you? Yeah, I just want to provide a little bit of clarification or, or ask Ms. Clifford to provide, because I think she made a mistake in what she said. I think she's, she said that currently the, the state properties have a residence coordinator, but not the federal. I think it's the other way around, no? No. Oh, okay. Because so what what has part. been uh, what has been communicated with me uh, in the past uh, by Ms. Clifford is that the state properties do not have a resident service coordinator because um, ever since I met Ms. Clifford two and a half years ago, um, I asked her how come we didn't have a resident service coordinator for Hampshire Heights, and um, and she said um, you know we're looking to hire one. 
Um, in fact, you would probably be a good candidate for that. Um, but later on, I saw a person being hired uh, who does phenomenal work, so great job hiring um, Lynn King, who is the resident service coordinator, but then later on the housing told me that she couldn't help us at Hampshire Heights because she was only designated for the federal property. So, no, so the confusion, if I can clarify. Because she's not helping us right, at Hampshire so Heights. The confusion is that the current um, funding to, to pay for her position is through a grant with the state and it's only for elderly or disabled residents. Okay. So she doesn't help Hampshire Heights because we're not, she does help, help them anyway. I mean, we've got, we've done tons of stuff for Hampshire Heights, but technically the person that we bring on, which should be funded through the housing authority, not through the state agencies, will be able to help the family properties in McDonald's House. Okay. That was, and you would still make a good candidate, so. Mm -hmm. I meant what I said. Yeah, no, no, no. I, I know, I just, um, uh, she hasn't actually done anything in our property and, and we've asked for her support and it has been denied in the past. So that's why I just wanted to clarify because that I, was on I the impression. I we did some backpacks. We did a lot of community stuff no. for all the kids. I no. personally delivered them. <coughs> well, the backpacks, yes, but um, the resident service coordinator has not been allowed to work with our community and she expressed that to me herself. Right. On certain levels, that's correct. Um, other questions or comments? Councilor Donald, anything you want to? Just well, just in conclusion, maybe if sure. we're wrapping up. I mean, I think you hear a lot of important details uh, tonight. We're kind of I don't want to say getting in the weeds because they're important details. Um, but to bring it back to the the main proposal, I think um, this is something where if we get more tenants on the board of the housing authority, all these things, to my mind, get worked out better, more efficiently, more inclusively, to Councillor Klein's point, uh, going forward. And I understand that this is a change and that we'd be the only city in the Commonwealth uh, to do this. Not the only city with special legislation to change the housing authority, but to do it in this particular way. Um, I think it's our job not just to, to, to not necessarily accept when people tell you you can't do something. Like I say, I don't think the Department of Housing and Community Development is opposed to this, but let's say they were. I mean, our job is not to bend to, to what they want. Our job is to represent our constituents as best we can. In my mind, the people who are citizens of our city but live in public housing do not get the representation that they ought to have with regard to the policies that directly affect them. And this is not in any way commentary on the, on the current members of the Housing Authority Board or its management or executive director at all. It's about trying something new to set up a new structure, a new way of doing things so that they have better representation. And I know it's a hard one, but I think through this process we can find a way uh, to give it a shot. And I think we have a chance of success. So just like to close it off that way and, and thank everyone and thank the committee again for considering Thank you, and just thank you everyone for coming. I know there's a baseball game and Law and Order, and so, um, we, we very much appreciate you coming in. And, um, and so there's, the second one of these forums is on November 13th, it's a Tuesday, and that's in City Council Chambers, um, also at 7 p.m. So, um, and that is gonna be jointly with the Legislative Matters Committee, and then, so we'll, we'll have a similar process, and then after that, both committees are going to convene one right, ours first and then legislative matters after. And we will be voting on this uh, proposal and because it will go back to um, back to the council. So we will be voting on a recommendation. So that will be on the 13th in council chamber. So, um, and if anyone needs, we have um, flyers in Spanish and English. So, and th huge thanks to Laura, who uh, delivered them to all the properties yes. and, and has Thank really you. worked very hard to get them done. So, um, but if anyone needs, you know, needs flyers or needs information, contact Laura, contact me, we'll get you whatever you want. So, uh, right, right there. Um, so we're gonna. It's okay. Last break, but it's okay. No, but we still have stuff on our agenda. Uh, <laughs> 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 um, definitely like it.
Okay. okay. So, the next thing on the agenda is new business, and there is new business. Um, because Councillor Nash has drafted a letter to, um, to Columbia Gas, and um, if I want to gauge people's feelings about whether we have time to kind of review it quickly, and then we can move forward. Otherwise, I told them that we might uh, move into the next meeting. Yes. Well, I have a suggestion. Why don't we? It's now been shared with the committee. People take the time to read it. Um, and um, that and suggestion will be emailed to me, and then, or how can we? Do, I mean, they need to be done on the floor here, right? Yeah. Okay. So how about this? People I mean, take time to read it, yeah. and next time we meet, we can, uh, you know, entertain suggestions. Okay. That, that works too with your timeline. Yeah. Great. Thank you so much for doing that work. Oh, yeah. um, so we'll review it and. Uh, we will put it on the agenda for next time, but you understand it's a similar situation. Exactly. Um, Except the Red Sox won't be playing next time. Yes, so. but legislative matters will be waiting for us oh, yeah, to yeah. Okay. adjourn before they can start. Leave it to the chair's discretion. Um, so why don't we look at that situation and see, uh, see what we think. And if not, then it might be. Okay. okay. Um, oh, yeah. One, uh, one second. Let me just adjourn. So, um, I'll just, is there a motion to adjourn? Adjourn. All those in favor? Aye.